Okay, so in this video, what we are going to try is to introduce you human-computer interaction. This set of technologies that somehow, as you are going to see, are essential in the way we work, in our daily activities, and even for communicating between us. So, what human-computer interaction can contribute uh, in what way to social and healthcare. Uh, of course, we are going to focus human computer interaction to these special areas. So, as you know, technology is evolving very fast. New things are coming that are going to change how we work, how we interact with devices and people, and how we are going to live. So we need, of course, and this is the, uh, the objective, okay, we need to uh, help professionals in social and healthcare sectors to understand human-computer interaction and how these technologies can help people and also their work. So what is human-computer interaction? How can we define it. So somehow in human-computer interaction, the main objective is exploring new ways to interact with computers, devices, and as a consequence of that, also new ways of interacting between humans. So in human-computer interaction, there are people involved from many different areas, such as software, hardware, new devices and technologies, people uh, familiar with new communication channels, new media, of course, art, design, psychology, of course, education, special education, healthcare, welfare, social assistance. So, uh, if we want to create uh, new interesting experiences and new ways of interacting with uh, the new devices uh, we have in the market, well, we cannot do that alone, the ICT people alone. We need, of course, professionals from many different areas in order to be able to provide effective solutions to the target, okay, to the final users. So, we try to achieve something we know as universal usability. So we uh, try in human-computer interaction to improve how we interact with devices, how, as a consequence of that, we can improve how we work, how we do our daily activities, how we, of course, we enjoy, enjoy our spare time, and how we interact with each other. So human-computer interaction is also really important to avoid people exclusion, something very interesting. By facilitating impaired and people with special needs or some kind of dependency to do things not possible before. So, of course, human-computer interaction, as we are going to see in the next video, can also make our life easier to, of course, to professionals, uh, mainly professionals in the health and social sector. Evolution, okay, uh, maybe you are not familiar with that, but at the very beginning of the last century, the first computers, of course, the way we had you know, to interact with, with them was really hard, okay, so only uh, highly skilled professionals were able to really work with the first computers we had. Of course, with the technology evolution, more and more people have been able to work and interact with any kind of devices. Well, a special interesting moment was the uh, creation or the first microprocessors. Uh, I'm talking about the 70s of last century. So with that, the era of personal computing started and it was clear that it was necessary to open computers to a more general population. So, 
Starting from terminal and text interaction, we, are, we have been moving towards graphical interfaces with elements you know very well, folders, the use of the mouse, pointers, menus, and so on. So this is the classic, the classic interaction paradigms, okay? Where you have on the top left, as you can see in the top left, we have uh, how we work normally with a traditional desktop computer. So we interact with the computer. We are also able to interact with our environment, with the real world, but the computer and the real world, they are not really interacting each other. So, on the left bottom, okay, you have what we are living right now. We call it uh, the concept of mm, transparent computer, okay, also known as pervasive or ubiquitous computing. So this means that we have devices everywhere, so our information is in the cloud, uh, we have internet connection from any of these devices, so we can get access to our information, our data, our uh, agenda, whatever we have to do, from any device, anywhere, okay? On the right column, you have on the top, what we call virtual reality. So the idea is, let's immerse the user in a new digital environment. Interactive environment, environment and connect it with uh, maybe avatars and of course other humans. And finally, okay, we have augmented reality. As you can see, uh, in virtual reality we don't have communication, you can see it in the uh, write-up diagram, we, we don't have interaction with the real world. However, in augmented reality we do have uh, direct interaction with the real world, but somehow we are going to have an extra layer, an extra information, synthetic information that is going to augment, to complement the real world. So the idea is what you have there, let's offer the user direct access and vision of the reality, and let's add new synthetic elements onto it. Cheating, this is the objective, your brain, that eventually won't be able to differentiate virtual or real elements. So uh, here you have a couple of uh, very well-known devices, the Microsoft HoloLens, which is an augmented reality device, and you have an HTC uh, virtual uh, head-mounted display. So the idea is that uh, virtual reality, somehow we can summary the idea uh, as an attempt to replace our experience totally. But uh, the objective of augmented uh, reality is to amplify okay, the experience we have of the real world. So two quite different objectives with potential different applications that, in both cases, are going to be a before and after on how we will learn, interact with the world and with others. So uh, virtual and augmented reality without any doubt are the uh, maybe the most important uh, disruptive technologies we have right now in human computer interaction. So in virtual reality the idea as I'm telling you is uh, this uh, immersive experience, okay? and of course to be able to interact with these virtual elements, okay? Everything generated by a computer, by a device. So, uh, in a new world, uh, this is the objective, synthetic, interactive, that in a uh, very near future is going to be called, it seems, uh, metaverse experiences. In the other side we have augmented reality. Uh, and augmented reality, uh, the objective, as you can read here, is a kind of uh, real-time, direct or indirect view of a physical real world 
that is enhanced or augmented or complemented by adding virtual computer-generated information to it. So a true, I repeat, a true AR solution, okay, has to follow these properties. Uh, it has to combine real and virtual objects and it has, this is also very important, to be able to align real and virtual objects with each other so that as the view of the real object changes, the augmented object connected to it changes accordingly. So this is the final objective, to cheat our brain, to think that the virtual object is really there. Okay? And it has to run, of course, interactively, in three dimensions and in real time. Currently, what kind of solutions we have right now about augmented reality, a common one is what we call optical AR or vision-based, in this case using marks of specific images, and traditionally using what we call video see-through. In the picture uh, you have an example of ours, where using a tablet we can uh, see, uh, in this case, uh, a book, and immediately when the application detects this book, a virtual element appears. So now if I move the book or if I move the tablet, the virtual object is going to be anchored, connected, okay, to the real image, okay? This is what we call video see-through because the reality, okay, is uh, something we are not uh, looking at directly, but using the screen of the device. So this is done by using the camera of the device, the device identifies a picture, and the vision of the reality from the camera is complemented with virtual elements, okay? But the alignment is perfect, okay? So you have the feeling that the virtual element is already there. So the combination of the real world plus synthetic elements is seen in the screen of the device. This is why we call it video see-through. This technique, and this is also an example of ours, can be used uh, not only in, with pictures, it can be used also with objects. So in this case, this uh, music uh, player, very old, has no speaker, but uh, using the application you can see the speaker, okay? So you can move around the object and you can see the speaker that it is missing in the real world, okay? So another possibility uh, is instead of using what we have described as optical solution or computer vision based solution, is to use something we have in every mobile device. We can use, of course, the GPS and the orientation sensors of the device. This is very interesting outdoors, okay? And uh, as you know, it was a really famous uh, game called Pokemon Go using this technology. However, there are still some challenges and also the uh, error we have with the GPS is quite important. If we want to enjoy okay, a full augmented uh, reality experience, okay, uh, we have also this possibility and we have some, as we call them, optical see-through devices. So true augmented reality means total alignment between the real world and the synthetic elements. So if you move the virtual elements as I'm telling you, are anchored in their positions. So devices such as HoloLens or Magic Leap are optical see-through AR, okay? So the vision of the reality is a direct vision, not using the screen of the device. So we are, the, 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 the lenses here are transparent, so we can see directly the real world. And of course, this vision, by projecting in these glasses, the synthetic information is complemented, of course, 
with the synthetic elements. The problem is that this technology is still in the early stages, it's expensive and it has some very important limitations. So we can apply, we can use virtual and augmented reality in a lot of different areas and in the next video we are going to see some examples in the social and healthcare sectors. But of course in education, in all levels, okay, and training professionals, the use of virtual and, uh, and augmented reality is very interesting. But uh, pay attention, and also we are going to talk about that in the next video, that the use of this technology can allow inclusion of those with some kind of functional diversity, some kind of dependency, some kind of impairment, into the labor market and in the industries, helping them to do tasks they couldn't do before. So that's very important. Uh, but talking about human-computer interaction in general, we don't only have virtual and augmented reality, okay? So, uh, as, an, as, you, as you can read uh, here, the time of only using keyboard and mouse is over. We are growing, of course, to still using keyboard and mouse because it's perfect for many activities. But we have many new possibilities available that can approach the interaction with the digital devices to everybody. So, one example of that is the use of what we call direct manipulation. Okay, so as you know, many mobile devices, all the mobile devices, they allow some kind of direct manipulation because we can touch the screen of the device and these touches can be detected. So we can manipulate the objects without the level of interaction we have using a mouse. So maybe for you this is not a problem, but for many people to be able to touch the elements and to modify them in a very intuitive way is a before and after. And the use of the mouse is a level of interaction they don't feel very comfortable with. But we can also use our body, okay? Uh, we can use devices such as Microsoft uh, Xbox Kinect device in order to track our body. So uh, everything we do uh, with our body can be detected, okay, in real time. So we can interact with uh, any kind of application using our own body. And of course, Nintendo was able to offer us similar solutions. This is an example of ours, okay? This is an example we developed, okay? Where uh, children was able to control, in this case, a whale by just moving uh, their body, okay? And jumping, moving to the left, to the right, crouching. So everything was controlled just by using one single camera. Of course, mobile devices are now just not only able to improve interaction and connection to, to the internet, but they can also, as you know, track our, and this is very important, activity and health. Tracking activity is very interesting for many, for example, social applications and uh, health, of course, in order to improve, of course, our health. So we are living an awesome moment where mobile devices offer new possibilities. So they offer multi-touch, direct manipulation, so it's very easy to work with them. They allow us to use something we call sensor-based computing, uh, which means that these devices are including more and more sensors with uh, many new possibilities, okay? So it is very well known that uh, this kind of uh, new smartwatches, they are able to, to of course, to control our uh, heart uh, rate, but also our oxygen in, in our blood and other parameters, okay? 
This is important because now we are living the moment of what we call context-aware computing, uh, which means that the device is receiving information, is receiving our interaction even, without us doing nothing. Okay, so we don't need an explicit action in order to interact with the device. Just breathing, just living, okay, uh, the device is able to get, of, of course, a lot of information. So the device can be aware of the context, in this case of the user, but also the device can be aware of the surrounding environment as well. So many things can happen many actions can be triggered without an explicit interaction uh, by the user. And of course, as I described earlier, uh, we are living the ubiquitous computing era. Okay? So, although we have a specific series of videos talking about artificial intelligence, it's interesting to see here that artificial intelligence is really boosting human-computer interaction to new incredible achievements. So, artificial intelligence, when applied to human-computer interaction, is achieving to go far beyond when offering new interaction possibilities to users. So AI can provide meaning to our environment, semantics to our environment, can validate, for example, the user's actions, can get information from the context and the environment and understand this information and to help us to get uh, extra information about our environment we are not able to perceive. We can, of course, interact using our own voices and natural language. We can have, of course, human-like virtual avatars, etc. Okay, so AI is uh, somehow making human-computer interaction even much more effective. So here you have, for example, uh, natural language interaction, chatbots, voice assistants, automatic translation, uh, we are not far from uh, being able to uh, communicate with anyone in the world without knowing the language of the country we are visiting. Image recognition, artificial vision, etc. All this uh, technology related with artificial intelligence, when we integrate them into human-computer interaction, we have a new uh, set of uh, possible applications and in the field of uh, social and healthcare we will see some examples in the next video. So this is all for now, this is uh, a kind of introduction to human-computer interaction in order to show you that this is a very very broad area with many technologies, many possibilities where it is going to be necessary to interact uh, with very different people with very different profiles. Because in order to find a solution able to uh, be interesting for someone, we need, of course, to know the kind of necessities of the target population. So in the next video, what we are going to do is to see some specific examples in the social and healthcare sectors.